I mean, it's, there's been games where I played when I was doing threes, and we had the boom. I thought we had it won. We're rolling them. They they did a run by of links. They took out like all my drones. I was like, I don't care. I have enough minerals. I'll just build a few more drones, and this will be game. And we ended up losing. And I was just like, crap. You know, I wasn't thinking. I, I built but like my one spying crawler, which is a new jack. So, um, those are for team games. But anyways, uh, doing those run bys can really change the dynamic of the game. It can really flip it. Because if you take out like one or two expands, and now he's what, he's maybe living on three bases, or he's living off two bases, and you have three bases, or you have four bases now. Flipping that, the game around like that is just super beneficial. You're gonna hear the sounds going off, I'm just, you don't need to say anything, don't worry about it. Don't, you, you, look, see, look, here's the game. You don't need to see nothing yet, it's still early on, alright, look, this is three bases, look, it's three bases, see, Zerg's greedy. This Zerg right now is really greedy, well, first off, if you expand, and that's been the, uh, Concepts when you see this FE expand, uh, a lot of um, Zerg players going immediate third base. Just so you know, so if you're Protoss and you see in your Forge first and expanding, you should scout for a third. That's real common for Zerg. And if you're Zerg and you see it, you can usually get away with this as you're actually going to see uh, Demiga, I guess this is his name, get away with it uh, pretty easily because. Uh, Moose or er, Moose has to uh, doesn't scout and doesn't look for his third because he gets his own third. So whatever. But this is what I'm talking about here. Look, this is actually good. Like, Sim City. This is what I'm talking about. See how he blocks that off. He has four gateways, one cannon. It's blocked off. No links can run by and kill this. While up top, uh, there's still a gap. But usually that's where his army is usually hanging out at. So the gap's closed by his army. But this one is actually going to be a Muta, so we'll slow it down. Muta run by, so let's see what the Muta do. Come in, oh look at that, Templar, it forces a cancel there, good. Killing a few probes, I think killing like one. I mean, it's not bad, but the point is, still harassing, not losing any uh, Muta. Again, forcing his opponent to build cannons, that's 300 minerals now, and he doesn't have an archive up now. Now he has to build it somewhere else. Again, there's no archive up yet, there it is now. And then he's even building, forcing the cans in his base now. We're going to see the mutas come back in a few seconds here. Look, now he has more mutas. Again, not directly engaging. He sees that he's, he's kind of actually directly engaging here. But then he's going to pull back and say, okay, now I'm just going to go and just harass your production. Okay, he has a bunch of stalkers. Okay, I can kill what I can. Kills one cannon, almost kills another, kills a pile, and you think, ah, oh, it's insignificant. Well, no, not necessarily, as uh, he's going to come in and just softening them up. See, now look, oh, wait, there's got, there's mutas, okay, now i got to leave again. Finally destroys off that last cannon, now he's going to start doing work on his base. You know, he's trying to do as much damage here as he could, but he kind of had a pretty good uh, defense there. We're going to see a run by here in a second, as I want to slow it down for you. And for us, because I am going too fast. Oh, I gotta slow down my pace here. Again, doing a run by. Not on his expand necessarily, but actually, this this time he's going for his main. And I think this could have been a little bit better served. As you see, his main's pretty much mined out. If this was me, and I saw these cannons here, and I saw really no minerals left, I would have gone straight for these guys. I would have gone. I would have gone pylon, pylon, pylon. Actually, I probably probably would have gone, yeah, pile on, pile on, pile on, and started taking on gateways. Well, he has a shit ton of gateways over here. I probably would have gone for Robo then, and then, like, uh, the Robo Bay itself, and then gone for the pylons. Um, that's just me, though. But anyways, I'm not playing this game, and obviously I'm not a Grandmaster, so... Uh, he does, he ends up going pylon, pylon, pylon actually here. Yeah, see, like a pylon, 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 boom! Played that right! After he killed the probes, of course. But anyways, right now they're kind of base trading. But he's just her doing harass, you know, he's just doing it for my, he's, he knows what he wants to take out. And he's going to take out as much of his support as he can. Support being workers, obviously number one. And then going for pylons, my whole screen lights up blue, number two. Because he has enough gateways in this game, you know, maybe if this was his only producing 
structure were these gateways, then maybe I would have gone like pylon, 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 and then destroyed all the gateways. But since he has so much gateways here too to produce from, he has four there, he has two here, it's just like, well, how can I stop him from producing? One, kill workers, kill, he has no minerals now. Two, kill all his pylons. If he can't, if he's, if he's, you know, upside down, he can't produce units, you know? So, you know, therefore, you're, you're killing the pylons that matter first though. So you're killing the pylons that power these gateways. You're killing the pylons that can power those gateways. And then, um, because now he's actually forced to come back and I actually think he loses. I think he spent a little bit too much uh, time back there, wasn't producing enough units back home, sorry for the lag. And, you know, we don't really don't care what happens the rest of the game. I think it's, I don't know, I, I think he ends up pulling it out at the end. I don't know, I th actually I think he does lose, I don't know. But anyways, so that was the Muta run by. Uh, da, 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 da. Actually, I don't have a better. I actually do not have a better Zerg one. I am surprised. So for Zerg, I'm sorry. I thought I had two of each. I thought I had two Protoss, two Terran, and two Zerg for each section. It looks like I don't. I only have two Terran, two Toss, and one Zerg. Wow. So Zerg, um, sorry I can get your replay, but uh, what you can do is Zerg. So you can do carpet bombs. So there was one replay last, not last, last episode, the episode, the episode before the one of my girlfriend's, I'm guessing that's episode 12. Um, it was a strategy, it was the one where I was telling you, showed you how to beat the four gate, was it four gate? Yeah, four, the forward first, four gate, all in-ish type build um, off of two base for Protoss. Uh, where the guy used overlords and he put balings in them and was carpet bombing their mineral lines. You could do that as Zerg. Uh, I guess I couldn't find a replay besides that one object I could have used. Uh, I wish I could find it. I might still have it. Hold on. I remember who that was. Uh, I think it was. Was it this map? No, it wasn't that map. It was a weird map, I remember. Fuck. I know I have it. I have a crap ton of replays. I went through today and was actually cleaning them up because it was pretty ridiculous um, how many I had saved from like downloading and whatnot. Damn, I know I have it. Where the hell is it? It's not that far back. It was September. I think it was after the patch. Maybe it wasn't. It might have been. No, it's not that map. Oh, I think it's this one. Yes, it's this one. Here it is. I have to load it up in the, dang, I gotta load it up in the other, it's an old version of the replay, or old client. So I do have two, look at that, I found you one. And this, this is going pretty long, this is gonna be a long video, it's like a 40 minute video. Wow, 40 minutes, probably, I apologize. If you guys don't like these long videos, you wanna like shorter, like into segments, then just let me know, I can break them back up to like 20 minute segments, or however long segments, or do parts. Kind of like I could have broke this into three parts. Zerg, Protoss, Terran. You could have been like, okay, I don't even care about Terran. I only care about Protoss. I only care about Zerg. And I could have broke it down to those three parts. But if you want that, I can do that um, next time I do a type of video like that. So I'm going to time is eight this. And, uh, so you should remember this video if you watched the episode. If you haven't watched this episode, then, um, then you're messing up. Since I'm laying back in my chair, yeah, I'll focus on me real quick. I was chilling. It's been a good day today. You know, play some StarCraft. I mean, hamburgers. They were good. They were pretty good. I had a few frost in there. The humidity alone in this my apartment is actually pretty high. It kind of sucks. Because I like these, this really nice guitar. And it's acoustic, so if you own guitars, you should. Or, well, if you play guitar and you have a really nice acoustic, you know that uh, humidity levels for acoustics. For like nice acoustics are really bad, like if they're really high. So the humidity is like like above, uh, what is it, 45 or 55? 55. 55. It's above 55. It's too humid, and what happens is the wood swells on you, and you get like this buzzing sound when you're playing because the wood's absorbing all the moisture, and it's bad for your guitar because it makes it sound 
terrible and it's just bad for the wood and you can end up splitting the woods in the end. You have to get to like refinish and fix and it's not good. And it was like a really expensive guitar. So I had that issue. So I'm trying to like get a dehumidifier to solve that because it's really crappy. And uh, I don't know where I was going with that besides. Oh crap. Oh shit. Hold on. Alright. So now that was my side story about humidity. Oh yeah, I also was going to say if the humidity is too low, it's bad because then it dries out the wood of the guitar and it can cause it to split also. So if you have a really nice, and I'll pause it, you have a really nice guitar, there's a sign, here's a little tidbit for you. You have a really nice guitar, you have any humidity issues, um, you can use those, you know those little, like when you buy like new shoes, they have like little silicon crystals, those little packs. You can buy those online, like in packs of like 900 milligrams or like 450 milligrams. And you can buy these packs. You can put them in your guitar case and actually absorb the moisture, so that way uh, the humidity levels inside your case actually drop, and it keeps it isolated from the outside. And if it's too, it's not like if you're like in places where the humidity is really low, like like maybe like in a desert, like in Vegas, where the humidity level is like zero, and it's way, way, way dry, you actually get you actually you're supposed to buy a humidifier and you put the humidifier in there to create moisture. But anyways. Just thought I would finish that story stuff. I can start it. Here we go. As you see, we there's this huge battle going on over here. He's he's doing uh, carpet bombing uh, with the overlords and the banelands. But this is another again. He's not. He's fully engaged over here. But he look at this. Da, 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 da. Oh look, look! I got presents. I bring friends. Boom, 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 boom. And those are two ones. Maybe even two twos. Let's see. I mean, I gotta grab the Zergling. I'll grab one of these. It doesn't work. Where the hell is there a Zergling? I I swear I think he's two two or two one because um, they were one shotting those. Uh, whatever. Just take my word for it. So you could do that as Zerg. So as a Zerg player doing those run bys with the Overlords with Banelings is a pretty decent strategy. You know, as long as their Overlord doesn't get sniped out. It works very well. As you, as you saw here, there's no, you know, he has a pile on here, but there's, there's no defense. So it was easy to come in here and just totally destroy his whole mineral line. That's his whole army was over here. And he, he kind of read as a two base all in um, type of push. And it didn't work, obviously, because he ends up losing. But so that will end the Zerg section. Uh, as I actually have to re log in, as I forgot. Can use my authenticator. So that was the Zergs. Um, two, you can do Muta. You can also do Lings. You can do Roach Drops. You can do Nihilus Forms. Um, Nihilus Forms. My, fr my friend's been telling me that uh, backwards. and telling me, he's like, dude, Nihilus Forms are good. And I still don't, I'm still not sold on Nihilus. I am not sold on Nihilus. Because he was saying, I was talking about doing this run by show. He's like, dude, that'd be legit. You better talk about Nihilus Worms. It's like, dude, Nihilus Worms? Who the fuck uses Nihilus Worms? Nihilus Worms suck. Like, they're not good investments. But, so, you could use Nihilus Worms. Like, when they're attacking you up front, you bust out Nihilus in the back, and you send a bunch of Lings in there, and you take out, like, you know, like, their expand, or you take out their natural, or not their natural, their, their main workers, or, you know, maybe some structure. So that, that can work. It's very... I said being viable. I don't do it myself. I don't like it. If you can maybe work it in, there's other pros I've seen do it before. Um, so not like it's not a necessarily bad strategy. My my friend likes doing it, and it works for him. So uh, doing that, I personally like just doing the bailing drops, or I do. I'm more of a muta person, so I do a lot of muta harassing, a lot of muta run bys, um, just because I've always kind of since since I guess beta when I played Zerg for a little bit. Um, all I did was muta builds. That's all I was doing. Just how to kind of work in mutas. Mutas are so versatile. So that's all I did. And then I stopped playing Zerg, went to Terran, and then went to Toss, and then now I'm back to Zerg. Because so I played all the races, and I think I know them well enough to know which one I like the best, which was Zerg. Even though Ter Terran's actually, to me, really easy to win. I can, I can, I'm actually a better Terran player than Zerg player, to be honest, but. I'm really stubborn with. I don't want to. I don't want the easy way out. I guess. No offense to any Terran players, because Terran is probably the most macro heavy, army wise. Uh, army wise, macro heavy race you can play. 
people say Zerg is. Well, Zerg is to an extent with, with your structures and what you're building, but uh, for your army, if you know how to macro your army right as Terran, then you can almost never lose. Almost. I mean, I mean, you can still lose, but if you, it's it's very, what's the word? It's very. Um, I forgot the word, but it, you know, it's it's depending on the circumstances that you don't play like a retard. So yeah. Anyways.